Hello everybody, um, in this video I want to do a quick update to my um, PAL flash air gap flash controller. Um, I've not really touched this since uh, sometime in November, um, so I thought it was about time I actually started doing something with it. So um, the last time you saw this, the, uh, the controller uh, for it was actually on my development board. So what I've done here is just transferred it onto a little prototype board that I've made up into a, a working uh, a working unit just to make it a little bit easier to use uh, and then I can actually start playing about with this and actually trying to get some some interesting photographs out of it. So I just wanted to run through what I've done with this and how it works uh, so you can uh, get a better idea on uh, what I'm actually doing. So essentially what this actually is is a, um, a very simple timer. Uh, what you have is a uh, trigger input um, and then the the microcontroller I've got on here creates a small delay um, that's adjustable, uh, which will then fire the uh, the air gap flash um, after that uh, that delay. So it uh, allows you to control the timing of the actual flash compared to uh, the the actual event. Now, in my example, I've got a uh, a tube and a ball bearing which falls through it. Um, that creates the trigger, and then it impacts on something and hopefully makes a mess or breaks something, uh, which can then capture on camera. So what we have here on this uh, prototype board is uh, we've got uh, an LCD up at the top here um, just to indicate the uh, the actual delay. Uh, we've got two 10-turn uh, pots um, here. Uh, one is a fine control and one is a coarse control. So this allows you to adjust the uh, the time uh, between the trigger and the, the actual flash. Um, this is adjustable between um, it starts at uh, 50 microseconds and goes up to uh, 1.6 seconds uh, approximately. So in addition to that, uh, I've got two buttons here. Um, this one doesn't actually do anything at the moment. Uh, I haven't really found a, a use for it yet, but I'm sure I will um, as I start to use it properly. Um, this one here um, just allows you to arm and disarm the unit uh, because one thing I found when I was uh, playing about with this initially is I kept on firing the flash accidentally when I was setting things up so uh, having an, an arm and disarm button was uh, pretty essential. Um, we've got a small um, transistor here which actually switches the output to the flash unit to trigger it because uh, I wasn't able to drive that directly with the output from the PIC. Um, over here we've got a small little power supply just a, a 7805 linear reg just pretty basic. I, I'm probably not going to be using much of that because I've, I'll just be using my desktop power supply uh, to power it directly off 5 volts anyway. And uh, over the over here you've just got another transistor which it allows me to uh, um, turn the LCD backlight on and off. I, I've got that set up on a PW, PWM just so I can control the brightness of the screen. Um, we've got a contrast control here. I probably should have put a fixed resistor in for that but you know I put that in, and there we go. Um, we've got a little bodge here. Um, this is the uh, dropper resistor for the the LED backlight on the uh, the LCD. Uh, I didn't have a high enough wattage resistor to go in there, so I had to parallel those up. Um, we've got a uh, 10 megahertz uh, crystal oscillator. Um, that is then uh, PLL'd by the pick up to 40 megahertz, so I'm running that at, um, at full speed. And on the back, uh, we've got a load of spaghetti. These terminals here give me the uh, input from the uh, optical trigger, um, the output to the actual flash trigger, and uh, I've got power input here as well. So if we take a look at the optical trigger that I've got set up here, I've got uh, an aluminium tube here mounted on this um, steel um, box um, because I'm probably going to be mucking around with water and things like that, so I just wanted to contain the mess. Um, I have uh, two holes drilled in the side of the aluminium tube here and around the other side and I've mounted a, an optical switch uh, over those two holes. Now the, the one that I actually bought wasn't actually wide enough to fit around this tube so I actually just chopped it in half and uh, widened out the the sensor, um, the actual um, photodiode and the infrared uh, transmitter. Um, and it actually still works even though I've extended the width. It uh, work, seems to work fine. Uh, I've got a small little dropper resistor there for the um, the infrared LED and uh, the connections that go off to the, the controller board. So what I uh, actually do is I have a, 
a steel ball bearing, which I just drop through the uh, through the tube, and it uh, breaks the the optical beam and then triggers the actual flash. So I've got the controller board here um, plugged in and turned on, so I can just quickly run through how this actually works. Um, on the display here, you can see um, seconds, milliseconds, and microseconds. Um, this was a, a convenient way to uh, show various diff the, the three different um, uh, fractions of a second um, in one big long number, which was quite readable actually. It works quite well, I find. So you can either read it as 10 point something micro, uh, milliseconds, or you can see it as thousands of microseconds, or you can see it as um, a point of a second. It uh, seems to work quite well. So on here we have the uh, course control. So with this adjustment I can go up to about 1.6 seconds. And then on this one here we have the fine adjustment. Now the way I've uh, um, engineered these two 10 turn pots as inputs is that they are fed into two of the analog inputs on the PIC microcontroller. Um, each one of these is a 10-bit value which I drop the two least significant bits off each channel so they become 8 bits each um, and then those are added together with uh, a 1-bit overlap to become a 15-bit value and that's what gives me my um, adjustment with a small overlap between the two the two adjustments. So you can see here if I adjust these right down to zero so the fine adjustment will go to um, 12.75 milliseconds and the first click on here is 6.4 so there is effectively one notch of overlap which just makes um, selecting um, specific values um, a little bit easier. Now also on here I have um, this button here configured as arm and disarm so when you arm the unit you get um, a green light comes on green LED um, it says armed on the display and it also dims it as well so when that is in place the adjustment pots um, are no longer valid now. When you unarm it that means that the value changes but I might uh, I might add in some extra code in to remember what the last value was or something like that. Um, so once it's armed it's ready now for the uh, the optical trigger so if I drop my ball bearing through the trigger you can see there the the yellow LED indicates that the optical trigger has been triggered and then the next LED down the red one just indicates that the flash has actually gone off. So if I disarm this and turn the delay up, rearm and trigger it again, you can see these, these LEDs here flashing. So in the future, or very, very near future, I can now start uh, playing with this properly um, and experiment, experimenting with a few things to actually um, impact with this ball bearing, um, with this setup at least. Um, I've got some uh, a pack of microscope, microscope slides, so these are probably going to meet uh, some kind of destructive test um, so that I can uh, drop the the ball bearing directly on these or maybe I can put something on these that gets smashed along with them. Um, it, uh, it's going to have to get a bit creative I think about what to actually uh, smash to bits. Right, um, I hope you uh, all found that interesting. Um, I'm certainly going to be looking forward to creating some interesting stills with the slides, ball bearings and anything else I might be able to find to uh, uh, put under this, uh, this test rig. Um, Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you on the next video.